All right, welcome to the uh, DFL Before DNF podcast. We're in season two right now, and it's it's a slight deviation from se- season one. Season one was late race survival. How do you survive the late race urge to quit? And I and I am uh, am not only was I the perpetrator of that content, but I was the recipient of it. It, it helped me get my finish at the Zion Hundred last week. But what was funny and and what came to mind that going into season two, where season two is I'm, I'm talking to people who've founded trail running businesses and they're active in the business itself so it's not just someone who threw some money at something and has a has a different job but it's like i want to talk to the people who are getting their hands dirty on the trail running business that they're starting so we've done satisfy running we've done shit in the woods you know the photographer um speed land tailwind and while i was in the run last week i thought man i am death marching for 64 miles of this and i'm seeing shirts that say death march i'm like why have why haven't i reached out to death march uh running company because i think that they're you know creating some not only is it super cool stuff but just you know the the ethos of the brand it's it's so aligned with you know let's not take ourselves too seriously at the same time this is the most serious thing that i've ever done in my life is try to run these things so today i want to welcome taylor and cody from death march uh, you probably know them. They're not necessarily new to you, but maybe they are. And if so, I'm I'm stoked to be the one to introduce you. So, Taylor, Cody, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having us, Josh. Yeah. So, um, you know, you first came on my radar maybe after a, a post or two. Um, you know, I'm I'm into skulls. There's like a punk rock thing to to what you're doing, and and maybe that's not how you'd describe it. But you know, it it just worked. And death marching is a thing that most people that listen to this podcast, we think that we look like Jim Walmsley or Courtney Dow Walter. Then we see photos of ourselves and we look more so like the images on your shirts where we're just dead and, and dying, of, uh, you know, a more painful death. How would in either one of you, whoever wants to answer this first, how, how would you describe death march? What is death march to you? Like, what is the company of death march? What is it? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head, Josh. It's, it's really, um, to what you said, is, um, as, as fun and irreverent as um, we can possibly be talking about uh, the pain and suffering that we go through, it is also one of the most serious things that we could possibly do. Um, yeah. But there's, there, there is the fun, lighthearted side of it. And, um, and it's something that we just feel wasn't really celebrated enough, like, yeah, yeah, I bust my ass. You bust your ass to train for these races. They're hard as hell. And at some point, it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter if you're a pro that's going for a win. It doesn't matter if you're a golden hour finisher like me. At a certain yeah. point in time, everybody hits hits that pain cave, hits that wall, gets into the death march. And, and we just really wanted to have fun around that and celebrate it and yeah. tell everybody, you guys, Regardless if you finish, just towing the line, getting there, getting through that, you guys are badasses. Let's have fun. Yeah. That's that's really yeah. kind of what we're about. Yeah. And I, I mean, as Cody alluded to, the races themselves are a journey, and there's a lot of, yeah, funny things that happen um, throughout the, the race structure and those types of things. But the whole process, ultra running, and the community around it, just getting to the starting line um, is is a journey and a adventure in itself and that's part of um you know what we're we're about to um you know all of our journeys are, are different and um yeah. not all of us at the moment are are having smooth sailing but um yeah we'll get there we'll get <laughs> through it and we might as well have some fun with it and you know you'll notice the bright colors and that's that's all mm-hmm. cody cody loves bright colors so <laughs> Are, are any of you the actual graphic designers as well? No, um, not at all. We we have a couple of designers that we work with that are obviously insanely talented. Yeah. Um, I I hack some graphics into making them manageable for different formats on social media and whatnot. But um, I, I do a lot of the well, we all but do a lot of the um, kind of brainstorming and um ideation of the graphics and then um work with our artists to to come up with the designs for nice. the concept yeah all right We're so definitely the idea you know with, with yeah yeah that makes sense me too so th- as you think about like uh the, the start of the whole thing what was the moment if you could go back and think hey you know 
we've got something in our hearts and our minds and our whatever that we think we should put out there. What was the moment where it was like, hey, well, should we do something? Should that be us? Or was that, was it just one of you was like, hey, I'm going to do this, but I need help. Like what, what, like take me to the founding moment, the moment of inspiration. Taylor, you got this? Yeah, I think, um, not I think, I know. Um, Cody had, <laughs> Cody had had the idea kind of in the back of his mind for, for quite a while. Um, him and Alan in their kind of backstory of, of friendship and trail running and their experiences out um, on the trails together. Um, it yeah. didn't have a name, but it had an idea. And then last year at Cody's um, High Lonesome Race out in Buena Vista, Colorado, um, oh, I had the luxury, luxury of pacing him from um, mile 50 to uh, Monarch Pass, and then Alan, our third founder, picked him up there. And I had him the last, uh, was probably like 20 miles to the finish. Uh, and Cody, in typical runner fashion, went out too hard. Um, <laughs> so we spent a lot of time um, on the back half of that race together, a lot of hours talking. Um, and Cody and I have known each other probably 10, 15 years at this point. Yeah. Um, and so we were talking and having these ideas of um, something to, you know, kind of what Death March has become, um, something to celebrate uh, this ultra running while we're in the midst of a race because, you know, got to think of something optimistic when you're kind of in the, the low point, points of your yeah. brain um, just yeah. trying to get through. And um, at, at the time, I, I think I had imagined more of just a um, – time passing exercise getting um cody a little bit distracted um yeah but the beauty of of some of those um time wasting exercises trying to get through the back half of of something very difficult is yeah. sometimes you come up with something um beautiful and that's um, yeah. kind of what we came to um and then we furthered that conversation during um when cody was pacing me at run rabbit um a few weeks well i guess like six to eight weeks later at that point uh -huh. um and then, like a week after that, Cody sent sent through the first graphic, um, kind of without um, <laughs> not not asking permission. He asked for forgiveness, um, <laughs> and it was easy to forgive him. Easy to forgive him in that aspect. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was kind of born out of um, our our time together um, on the trail, him and Alan, and yeah. when we were going through the names of you know what, what should we call this thing, <laughs> um, I thought it was only appropriate since. Uh, we're in the midst of a death march during uh, yeah. during the the formation that that was the appropriate name and here we are. Yeah, it's perfect when the name um, you know it doesn't always work this way, but it's perfect when the name of whatever you have explains it uh, what what you're doing. Like you know any any hundred miler they say ninety percent of the people who run a race don't know who finishes the race they just ran. So absolutely. My sort of like manifesto of Borderlands has always been like, hey, I mean, I love I love the ultravert. I mean, I love the elite version of the sport. It's so good. Like, I can't believe that it happens. It's just not the same sport I'm doing, even when we're on the exact same trail on the exact same day at the exact same race. And so when I hear death march, it's just like, oh, instantly. Yeah, of course. Why has there not already been something called that? Why is there not already a death march hundred miler? Like my, my dream, maybe we do this together. This would be fun. There's so the Donner party came through Salt Lake City on their way to eat each other in Nevada. And they were told yep. that there's this stretch just south of the Great Salt Lake that they're like, hey, it's going to be 40 miles and you can get through this in one day or a day and a half, two days, something like that. They're like, but there's no water, but you can get through the 40 miles. And it, and it ends up being 80 miles. And a lot of them die along the way there. But I've always wanted to do like a Salt Flats 40 miler that's actually an 80 miler. And that also should be called the Death March, you know, 40 miler if that's actually an 80 miler. I, just what you, just I, your wording is just so perfect. And so I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at here is that like it's in, what you're doing is instantly intuitive, you know, for all of us. And I think that's one of the things that's fun about it. Hey, don't. You talk about it. We're gonna, we're gonna be in. You you want to do a race like that? We're <laughs> we're in. That's that's right up our alley, and it's something that we've we've been talking yeah. on the on the back end of something we want to do. So let's figure yeah. it out. Yeah, something we want to do. Something connected something to the Donner Party would would be yeah. your vibes so good. 
Oh man, That's can you imagine perfect. a graphic there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah right, so it's tell it's me, make uh, me, maybe I'll start with that. Cody. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be good. I'm in. Let's seriously, let's do it. Cody, you're on my right, so I'll start with you. What What is your background? What What do you do? Like, well, tell me about your running background, your life background, where you're from. Just kind of some high level stuff. Yeah, yeah. So originally from South Dakota, um, I joined oh, nice. the military um, right after 9/11. Just I was in college, didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and yeah, that happened. And I thought, you know, what the hell? I, I at least, you know, owe it to the country to, to serve. So I served for four years, um, got Little out. Um, it was never what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, but um, it helped me kind of find my way. And that's really when I fell in love with running. Um, yeah. And it was, uh, it started with short distance stuff, 5Ks, 10Ks, quickly evolved into marathons. Um, and I, I was I was racing marathons for a while in Florida, uh, moved to DC got sick of the East coast, wanted to come back out West. So I moved to Colorado, which is, um, you know, at that point in time was in the outdoor industry. Um, I got a job working for Pearl Izumi, um, who oh, nice. is still one of the market leaders in cycling apparel, but at that time was in run as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had the, um, fortune of being able to manage the Pearl Izumi Smith optics, ultra running team back in the day. Cool. Which um, you know was was pretty amazing. Some of the some of the best ultra runners was you know, Dylan Timmy Bowman Wilson, on that team. Uh, Dylan was on the team. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. Uh, Dylan knows my wife uh, through college, uh, but then oh. Dylan was on the team, so I know, know knew Dylan. Colorado State. Uh, Scott Miami, local guy. Yeah, yeah, there's it was a it was a fun team, and that's that's when I really started to fall in love with ultra running, and and I didn't ever think it was anything that I could do. Yeah. Um, I was just around it, right? Uh, managing the team and talking to those guys every day, huh. um, going out to that's races. Cool. And, and that's what really solidified it for me was going out to these races. And, and yes, seeing the team and everything they went through in that elite aspect that you mentioned, but then also seeing like the golden hour at Western States is one of the things that I will never forget. Um, being hmm. there to, to watch that was hmm. um, just unbelievable. And, and yeah. it, it, hooked me. I was, I was sold and I just had to figure out, figure out a way to, to try to do it myself. And that like, that's kind of how I segued into it, uh, running with my buddy, Alan. Yeah. Uh, but personal side of, I've, I'm married to an amazing wife. I've got two little girls, uh, one and a half and a three, three and a half year old. And yeah, just loving life here in Colorado. So. And what, what's your day job right now? So I'm a, I'm the president of an indoor go karting facility. Oh, um, I left Pearl Izumi about six years ago and, and took okay. over marketing, and then shortly after the president of a of go karting. So, nice, that's awesome. Taylor, yeah. what about you? Yeah. yeah um, so I my background is a bit in endurance sports to to begin with as swimmer, triathlete, um, cyclist. Oh. Cody and I met at Pearl Izumi. Uh, <laughs> I was his gopher for a little while, which nice. um, young and silly, and I think the silliness of being young and Cody's youthful spirit um, bonded us pretty well there, and <laughs> yeah. where where we are now. Um, and right around the time I I finished my time at Pearl uh, in like 2011 or so. Um, and that was about the time um, I did my first ultra. Um, I was going out to aid a buddy, and he was giving me a hard time the whole drive out uh, to Gunnison, Colorado. It's about a three-hour drive. And yeah. in in my naivete, I was like, oh, it's 50K. It's only a little bit further than the marathon. How hard could it be? <laughs> um, and so I said, if they have race day sign up, you know, I'll, I'll do it. Um, and so I was fit from cycling, got out, ran, much like Cody's experience at high-low last year, went out really hard, came back really slow, um, <laughs> and and had a, had a lot of pain. And really, I didn't know what I didn't know at the time um, yeah. about ultra-running and the ultra-running world. Um, I had some tangential um, knowledge, thanks to, to Cody and his work with the Prolozumi Smith um, ultra team. Yeah. Um, but I really didn't know... Um, much about the sport. I was just going to help a buddy and um, found out, found out the hard way how how really hard it is, um, but also how how helpful and communal and and beautiful our our sport is. I remember um, being in the midst of a pretty painful um, death march in this um, 
older lady who had a must have had a lot of wisdom came by and gave me about half her camel back some salt pills just to make sure that i could physically get to the next aid station um yeah. and that that sacrificing um what you have for others on the trail um is something that i i hmm. look back on and thankful for um but it's um i think it's one of the unique things to what we're doing because it is is difficult um so from that first ultra i had a nice um big probably decade gap in my ultra running um <laughs> i <laughs> I was um, pretty pretty scared of it after that, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But after my after my first son was born, and my wife was doing some running, um, it made sense for our family to have to be involved in an endurance sport that's a little more accessible than, you know, going up and riding downhill at Winter Park or um, mm-hmm. out to Fruta um, on on yeah. bigger time consuming things. So r- running. Um, filled a filled a nice little space in my personal life um and has uh, really become um a large part of my identity you know starting death marches has, has helped it quite a bit but a lot of um the community that we've made um back in boulder county since we moved back here from from denver proper um, yeah and time spent around is 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 on the trails with people um and having that here has been been wonderful so yeah back in the foray of ultra running and really dedicated trail running since 2019 or so 2020 nice. somewhere in there a um, few hundreds under the belt um, oh nice struggling struggling with an injury right now so trying to figure out where where this year is going to take me um yeah it's been at the point in the injury where where that um, that struggle is a little more mental than it is physical, trying to resist coming back too quickly, totally. um, getting re-injured, and having death march and looking at everyone having fun and the highlight reel yeah. that is Instagram has yeah. been it been quite yeah. mentally taxing in that regard. Um, yeah, as well. But thankfully, like Cody said, also have a very strong supporting um, wife um, allows me to you know like bike commute, get stuff in this yeah. way, stay Go big, somewhat yeah. sane. Um, and yeah, it's, so, you know, it's been fun, um, committing to well, the sport say, really. Taylor, what you said, you got a couple or a few hundreds under your belt. What hundreds do you have under your belt? I have two finishes at run rabbit, um, okay. and steamboat. Um, it was my first hundred and it's one, like, I'm really motivated to get a 500,000 mile buckle there. So I got a few more of those coming up. How fast did you <laughs> um, this last year? I'm sorry. How fast did you go last year? Oh, uh, sub twenty six. Um, Dang, man. That's so, crazy. so, so get yeah, this guy's sponsorship. Um, <laughs> that's what Death March is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, speaking of Run Rabbit, um, the whole Death March founding team, Cody, Allen, and myself are planning on being out there this year. We'll see nice. um, kind of where I'm at, whether I'm just gonna support and pace, or if I'm feeling healthy enough to to nice. you know spend 24 or 25 hours on my feet what are the we'll dates on that. that september 13th i think okay nice yeah i've never been out there i like i like that run rabbit tries to um i mean i don't know disrupt is not the right word but you know the prize money it's interesting yeah the uh, prize I've never seen the course awesome. but... the course is great um i mean it's my only hundred experience um yeah it's, run rabbit but cody was out there pacing me so he has some insight into it it's yeah it, it kind of kicks you in the teeth from the beginning going straight up the front of the the ski hill like yeah. it's yeah. a very uh uninviting start um yeah but from there through like mile 50 is super fun um, nice. a lot of runnable sections a lot of varied terrain um and then it gets hard again from there until um <laughs> the last about 50k and then if you if you save some of the legs, it's pretty runnable from there. Um, really, but the absolute most torturous worst part of that entire race, you finish with like seven miles of steep downhill, down a service road coming oh. down the mountain, and <laughs> your quads are wrecked, like your yeah. feet are destroyed. You're like, what person just wanted to send you straight to hell and dance with the yeah. devil on this finish? Yeah, um, yeah, but. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the race is phenomenally put on. It's a great communal race. They fundraise a lot of money for the um, the valley there in Steamboat and um, non-profit. Nice. 
um, that's cool efforts in in the local area so not only the prize money but there's a lot of donation that goes into a lot of community support um, and yeah it's yeah I highly recommend if people want a first hundred there's no lottery you can just sign up really so that's um, surprising yeah so if, yeah so if somebody wants um, their first hundred it's a it's a tough one but it's accessible from a entrance standpoint that's awesome Hey Cody, what about you? What uh, high lonesome? Obviously, are, are you a is hundred miles your thing? Like, what's your what's your distance of choice? Uh, probably 50, 50 miles is my yeah. favorite distance. But um, yeah. yeah, I have five five hundred mile finishes. Dang, um, high lonesome being um, the the hardest one that I've ever done. I bet. Um, it was my first like big mountain race last year. I was scared shitless when I I I was the first time lottery entrant. I had like a 4% chance or something like that of wow. getting in and they drew That's my cool. name and I about passed out. So, uh, <laughs> but got, got my, got my butt into gear and, and ran it. And as, as Taylor said, I, I definitely went out way too hard, but, um, but I finished. And uh, I mean, I think very similar to you and first congrats on Zion last Thank weekend. You. That's fucking epic. It was, but, um, I Thank think you. very similar to you and that I just held on there at the end. Right. Yes. Death oh marching. my gosh. I, I yes. marched 30 plus miles in. So. Yeah. Whew. What what are what are some of your your other five? Your yeah, other four? so the Black Hills one hundred, oh, cool. um, which I'm oh, yeah. originally South from Dakota. South Dakota. Yeah. Yep. It um that course is is actually fairly brutal, but just absolutely gorgeous. Uh if you haven't been to the Black Hills, it's a it's a killer area. Hmm. A lot of single track. Um and then and then I have three finishes at uh the Lean Horse one hundred, which is also in <laughs> South Dakota. Okay. And it's uh it's on an old rails to trails, the Mickelson Trail. And so it's like a lot of a lot of climbing and descending, but there's slow, gradual climbs. If you're if anyone's looking for a first time hundred miler, man, and, and you know, you, you have you're you're close to the Black Hills or can get out there yeah. rel- relatively yeah. easily. It's it's a killer race put on That's by awesome. a, a great group of guys and um, yeah. Yeah. So those, those are my five and, yeah. um, I've, I've tried a few others. I, I have one, one DNF at, uh, at Bighorn. Um, oh. and then, and then that's, was it one of the wet it, years, so. like super wet, hard years at Bighorn? Dude, it, was, it was, it was hailing. Um, yeah. it was snowing on us. Um, and, and really it wasn't anything physical of not being able to make it. We just missed a cutoff and, mm. and there had to have been, 30 or 40 people with us at this for that one of the cutoffs that we just missed the time. Yeah. Um, it was just moving really slow up high because of how muddy and wet it was. Uh, yeah. People were falling, hitting their heads. It was, it was wild, but hmm. I, I, I want to get back out of there because that place that is, is, yeah. is gnarly. So, yeah. Yeah. What I love about both of your portfolios here of hundred milers is that they're both like, um, and I mean, this as a compliment, non marquee like um yeah. i run i mean I, I don't know how many people run run rabbit i know that people go there that prize money is great so i'm not saying it's not like a important race it's just like you know when in in my world like the people that i know every you know people are trying to get into western or people you know running wasatch which to me feels like marquee and that's just because i live here that's probably how those high lonesome or run rabbit feels to you there it's just like a you know, I've never yeah. ran, I've never ran an ultra outside of Utah because we have so many great ones here. So I just, yeah, love, well, I mean, it just I seems mean, like, Was- go ahead. I was going to say Wasatch, I'd definitely put in a marquee race. That's one that, yeah. uh, it's, one day it's, it's on the bucket list of races for yeah. sure. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's, I've DNF'd it twice. It's great. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I what, a what I think about death March, you guys, like as it relates to death March at this point is what I think that you get. And this is ultimately where I was going with that compliment is you get like the, the gutted out, uh, approach to running. Uh, I, I always, when I talk about how bad I am of of a hundred miler, I always, the asterisk is always like some people think, Oh, you're, you know, you're self-fulfilling prophecy. You you're doing this to yourself. Whatever. I would trade all of it in a second to be as fast as Jim Walmsley. Like I'm not, I want to be an elite grade runner, but I'm not. And for some reason I still toe the line. And I just, what I, what I gather from death March is that you, you really get the, from, you know, from the fun lightheartedness of your shirts, you really, act, you, you really get it. 
uh, you know, what it's like to suck at this sport <laughs> and be so okay with it and so happy with it and so proud of it also. So I think that, you know, just as by way of compliment, I see that in what you guys are doing. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Yeah, that means a lot. Yeah. So are, would you guys ever put on a race? Like you said you talked about it. Like is that is that something that you guys are kicking around right now or is it just like when the right opportunity like the Donner 40-miler comes up, you would do it? <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, you know, it's something that we've talked about. Um, no immediate plans right now, but it, it is in something that we'd like to do in 2025 or 2026 is, nice. is have our own race. Um, go ahead, Taylor. You have I was going to say it's it's such a deviation from um, kind of what we're doing from the amount of planning that it'll it will take from you know runner safety, volunteer coordination coordination yeah. for public land access um those types of things that um it's it's very high level um <laughs> the conversation right now um and it i think it's unreasonable to think that um we can put on um something that's quality safe um mm -hmm. enjoyable if you're into suffering for 40 <laughs> miles it turns out to be 80 um yeah you know all those things and and for us and I'm, I'm speaking for the the three of us. Um, obviously, Alan's not here to to speak for himself, but I um, I'm confident that he would be in agreement to to put our our confidence into it um, and prepare. It it's every much um, probably as much effort as training for you know an event and making sure you have um, crew prepped, um, pacers, yeah. safety, all those things, but on a much broader scale because you know other people's experience. Um, enjoyment fulfillment what it, however you want to look at it um is is contingent on on us doing um our job appropriately so it's something yeah. we're talking about it's something that's gonna take some time to achieve that um but it's absolutely something we want to do and expect that we will do um in the future yeah um, yeah so so tell me about uh alan um is in, and maybe I, sometimes I forget what did we talk about before we started recording and what do we talk about after is, is Alan in Colorado as well? No. So Alan's back in South Dakota. Um, okay. um Alan and I met in high school. Um, he had moved from North Dakota to South Dakota, okay. uh, when we were, yeah, when we were in high school. Um, and it, our, our friendship really turned and, and grew when, um, I moved back to Colorado um, we were both into playing racquetball and he would drive out, stay at my house for the weekend. We'd play racquetball. Nice. Um, and his, his, I mean, if Alan, he's, he's a linebacker. He's, I told you he, he works construction. He's a big yes. 250 pound. He's a big boy, just all yeah. muscle. Um, and so his, his venture into ultra running was we met, we couldn't play racquetball one morning. We went to breakfast at a village inn. And I had seen that there was the Black Hills 50 miler. And I was like, dude, we, we got to do this. And we didn't know shit. This was when I was still uh, managing the, the ultra team. And I just, I knew I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to try it and it. run. And yeah. Alan was like, all right, cool. Let's, let's do it. And I, I, I very much sold it that it was going to be super chill. We'd basically walk. <laughs> we'd eat a ton of food at the aid stations. Like 50 miles, like you're hiking. You've got this. And so... Um, yes, yeah, so we did the, the Black Hills 50 back in 2014. That was his first race. And, and we've basically done nice. an ultra together every year since, uh, whether it be a 50 mile, sorry, um, small delay here, a couple of 50 Ks, a hundred. He, he has a finish at the lean horse 100. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been, it's been fun having him and, and, right. uh, Alan and, and Taylor knew each other from Alan coming out here and, and doing some runs. And so, yeah, it's been the uh, a yeah. couple other notes on Alan that Cody didn't involve. He is the fastest walker you've ever met. Like oh, it's Insane. unreal. <laughs> um, like I'm not joking when the guy can like power walk up a s s decent grade at like 12 minute miles. It's insane. Like he's yeah. very good in that too. He still owes me a goal from his hockey team. Um, <laughs> so we got to give him a hard time because I asked him to score me a goal and he, to my knowledge, he hasn't followed through on that yet. So since he's not here to defend himself, 
he needs he needs to get out there and clean up some trash in front of the net. Get it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, All right. So um, tell me, yeah, but, for, for each of you, or Taylor, what what's you guys are fairly prolific in the in in the designs that you put out. Like meaning, you guys put out a good mm-hmm. amount of designs. Do you have a personal favorite or one that you you know that uh, you have influenced more than? Uh, you know, any of the others, like what, is there one you want to call out right now? Um, my favorite one, probably from a, I like to wear it the most, um, is our one we did with target acquisition as our artist, um, circular mm-hmm. logo where it has a five panel hat on, uh, Cody's wearing the sweatshirt mm-hmm. right now. Um, nice. just, I knew, you've talked about your punk rock kind of like background and skateboarding, yeah. but it's like one of the yeah. few black shirts or dark shirts we have. So I like that about nice. it. Um, and then in terms of like influence, the one making fun of my broken leg, um, I like that one a lot. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that one, but that was like specifically, yep. you know, t- taking a jab at me for going out and, you know, having a sh- fracture on my fibula. So yeah, I like that yeah, one as that, well. It's- it's a good a representation of uh, us, us uh, not so great <laughs> runners out there that we'd do something stupid like that. <laughs> what about you, Cody? This is true. Um, God, a favorite. That's tough. Um, P- Pain Cave is probably probably one of my yeah. favorites. Um, yeah. Dude, the design, the the ethos behind it, what it means. Everybody knows what the Pain Cave is. Um, that's probably one of my favorites to wear. And then yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the, the five panel target acquisition one, we've, nice. we've got one that's in the works with him that's coming out that might soon, uh, become my favorite. Um, nice. and then we've, yeah, we've got a few, few others that I think are going to be pretty good that are, that are in the works right now. So, yeah, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we have one in the works right now for, um, we have an athlete named Mason who's going to be running across the U S um, in two oh, nice. years, but he's, he's I'm, from I'm, Salt Lake. Yeah, he's Salt Lake oh, really? guy. Um, hmm. He's currently in school in St. Louis, but uh, uh, okay. yeah, he's a Salt Lake guy. Um, but you I know, really like is, he He has his, sorry, Taylor, he has his 24-hour run coming up in a couple weeks, and he's doing it at the track, uh, not in Clearfield, but um, really? somewhere right there. Yeah, I'll send you the info. Okay, please so, do. What's his name again? Yeah. yeah Mason, Mason Wright. Wright, also known as okay. Buff Runner. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, we <laughs> know, his, really yeah, we know by Instagram handles. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. But I'm I'm excited for the graphic we're doing for him too. Um, that nice. One's, the the rough sketches and rendering. Um, it should be a fun one. I'm really excited. That's for cool. that one. Yeah, I believe it. What's what's your and bestseller? That, uh, bestseller is probably Church of the Long Run. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yep. That's great. That, what, the wildflowers, the female one, um, has been yeah. pretty popular as well. We'll have some more of that stuff coming out later this year. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And we're, we're trying to do more around crew celebrations as well. Yeah. I mean, who, who would we be if it weren't for the people that just give tirelessly for us? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, we need to celebrate them. And so we have yeah. a couple of crew shirts out now. We're working on a crew pack that has some really fun stuff for them in it that I think will really resonate and people will enjoy. So. Yeah, that's fun. Even just thinking about this, when I, I, I paced my friend Cordell at the Bear 100 a few years ago, and he had, like, crew gifts for everybody. He's much yeah. more thoughtful than me. At, at the end of my 100-miler this year, I was like, ah, damn it. I, di- I didn't get any. I need, I need to think about this because I had a phenomenal crew, like just a world-class crew. But, yeah, if you had, like, a, a way for me to just go buy these and, you know, you're shipping it to them with something that's unique like that, I think that's a really cool idea for any runner to just be like, yeah, here's, here's my crew gifts, compliments of Death March. I'd yeah. buy that. Yeah, heck yeah. We uh, we're beta testing some some pacer cards right now. There's only a handful of them out, but uh, they're they're actual postcards that you send that have you you fill out like the the, the race, the date, that nice. info. But there's a cool paragraph talking about you coming and pacing me, and you just put it in the mail and send it to somebody to ask them to, to pace it's you. Like at a, race. a uh-huh. Valentine for ultra runners. It's yeah, hundred percent. Yes or no? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. come on, let's be honest. You get one of those in the mail, and you're gonna freaking love it yeah yeah it, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, a unique way to do it for sure yeah all right so to wind this down i'm i want to know because it seems like your design this is just me and you can yes or no i don't mind being wrong i often am but there's like some connection to like you know like metal uh and heavy metal like you know music in your design 
So whether or not you listen to them or not, that's fine. Your answer can be Celine Dion, as mine might be. What are you guys <laughs> listening to when you're out running? And like, has music influenced your design at all, or is this? Are they just totally separate from one another? But it, it, you know, it has these metal vibes. So I'm curious, Cody, you're on my right. You start. What are you listening to when you're out there, and and how has that influenced Death March? Yeah, yeah. So I'll hit with. I mean, just like my my the colors that I love. I'm bright and flashy. I like. I like everything. I like some Taylor Swift. I like, I yeah. like some, I, I mean, I do I, me too. anything yeah. that's going to get me just <laughs> moving and grooving. I, there's, yep. there's some like metal that I like, but I, I like all music. I listen to country. I, I listen to a mix. Yeah. Um, and then to the yeah. second part of that question, does music influence the designs? I would say no, as much as I would like mm. them to, and Taylor, maybe you feel differently, but at this point in time, I just like the design aesthetic of like, cool metal shit skeletons yeah. skulls doing yeah, yeah, yeah. funny irreverent things that have to do with ultra running and they, they vibe yep. really well together but not 100%. from uh an influence of music yeah taylor yeah i'd say i i mean i think there is some like just core musical inspiration in like my personality but i wouldn't say there's anything super specific to it what i listen yeah. to when i'm running um it really varies um like a lot of Wiz Khalifa, to be honest, that's probably number one. <laughs> um, and, and then also depending on like today, um, on the bike commute to work for an hour, I listen to my second most probably listened to playlist right now is a Spotify generated one called chaos anthems. So that's uh, kind of metal <laughs> and nice. angry. Um, but yeah, in terms of like inspiration, like, don't get me wrong like my older son and i listen to a lot of sabbath um but nice. i wouldn't say it's um you know an iconic um something that would have you know ozzy up on stage would have been an inspiration behind something you yeah know, maybe some of like the Avenged sevenfold um batwing skull stuff um like i used to listen yeah. to like unholy confessions before i get on the blocks in high school to go swimming <laughs> um so so maybe a little bit more um in the background than than you know actively from the forefront at this point let's say that uh, that what are you listening to what am i li oh thanks for asking let's see yeah well uh right now i have to listen to taylor swift's new album otherwise i would be an awful father uh it's what it's, <laughs> it's it, and here's my initial take because you asked um, my initial take is that it, it doesn't, it's not hitting immediately, but I'm also, oh, okay. and usually I need my music to be good for me on the first listen. I don't have time for this to like wait for music to, to hit and to be good. But my, my, my 10 year old son, he likes it on first listen. So we're listening to a lot. It, it is getting better as it goes, but I, I have, I've been absolutely obsessed lately with MXPX cause I had Mike on the podcast. He's not mm -hmm. an ultra runner, but we just there talked about like pu punk rock. Oh yeah, I, I'm trying to pull That's that thread awesome. of like punk rock and ultra running and skateboarding because it's just, you know, a lot of us are old punk rockers, and so it's really interesting to see, you know, that in our culture. So I, I, I hit their live album in San Antonio from like 2022 was, was on was on replay for a long time. When I'm out and I'm like trying to get inspiration, it'll be like uh, rancid as well. So I'll get into like my old punk rock stuff for sure. Yeah. And then separate from go. that, I cannot get enough of Chris Stapleton. I mean, just uh, Chris Stapleton is so good. I know, and it's like he's punk rock. He's Willie Nelson, you know, forty years ago. So he's got yeah. he's punk rock, you know, vibes in there. But that his he's got a song called White Horse that just came out, and I just can't stop listening to that song. So when I, as soon as my kids get out of the car, drop them off at school, we go from the tortured poets, whatever, to white horse on repeat <laughs> here we go so josh yeah. um did do you notice like since you zion's pretty fresh for you yeah do you notice like when you're in the hundred like how coming back to the music thing and listen to when you're running um a lot of people use it for motivation um whatever the case is but what's like as that day progressed or that experience through zion progressed did your um willingness to listen to music change or what you're willing to listen mm. to um change with the day the yeah. time of day um who you're with whatever the case is um, yeah 
So at, at the beginning of the race, I always try and listen to a little something at the beginning of the race because it's the only time that all of my senses are not, uh, I, I should say maybe all of my senses are with me. And as, my, as I start to get rubbed more raw, the first thing to, to go is my ability to listen to anything. So I'll listen like early on to get hyped. And then, then I, I almost invariably in every race, rather it be 50 mile or hundred K or hundred mile or at, or at around 36, I get this like rejuvenation. And so I'll go back to music at that point. And so at the, like the rejuvenation point at mile 36, it's usually something sappy, something sad bastardy, just like, because I'm trying to, like, I got to cry it out a little bit, you know, cause it's like, Oh my God, I've run 36 miles. Oh my God. I have, you know, what's that 64 left. So I got to, you know, I got to get the feels out, got to cry it out there because I'm eventually about to be rubbed so raw physically and emotionally that I've, and then I'm just got nothing left. So then I'm just, then, so in this race in particular, I didn't run with the exception of maybe, maybe half a mile. I was 60, 60 miles of death marching. So coming out of, out of that, then I, I just couldn't listen to anything anymore. And fortunately the guy I was running with, he's, my friend Alex. We started the starting line. It was me, Ryan, who's a former Green Beret, Jeremy, who's former Navy, and Alex, who's currently a C-17 pilot, and uh, then me, uh, who's no military. But I was trying to like, you know, through osmosis, get whatever makes them military strong. And yeah. we Getting separate tough. from. Ryan and Jeremy and it's just me and Alex and we get to the point I'm fortunate that he's also an old friend and I mean there there would be six hours without saying a word to one another because we just I just I get rubbed so raw I don't know how else to explain it so then the music just completely becomes uh, counterproductive to my ability to go forward so it's sometimes it's the thing that propels me forward early on. Then the, the senses are raw. Now I can no longer listen to anything. And that's like 20 hours. <laughs> yeah. I've, I have similar experience too, except for, um, like at the beginning, I like the energy of the crowd and the excitement and you're joining yes. the baseline doing the like first date questions. Um, yeah. Yeah. who are you, where are you from? What do you do type of thing? Um, yeah. And then, like you, I generally hit low spots right around the 36-mile mark, regardless of yeah. race distance. Like, I really yeah. struggle there. Um, yeah. But the difference for me is I'll put on some, like, down-tempo house music or something. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah. It, it ends up being, like, white noise in the background where I'm just there saying, like, shut off, brain. We need to keep moving. Um, yep. Which yeah. Which is – has worked for me. Um, so. Yeah. It, I was kind of curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, here's here's my question. Here's here's my last question. And uh, uh, Cody, start with you. Um, and you may have a perfectly written out business plan, and you're both going to have the exact same answer, and maybe you won't. F five years from now, let's assume that everything that that your trajectory and your momentum continues as as it is. What what would you love for Death March to be like five years from now? Like if you're, I mean, and you're just dreaming. You're, you know, don't worry about practically. How do we actually get there? Just, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if, like, where's Death March in five years? Man, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I mean, I, I, hopefully that in five years from now, I would love just people in the run industry, people, not run industry, people at races, the, just the everyday people that love to toe the line for whatever race. And, and look, I'm, we're not saying we're completely inclusive to, to only ultras. That's just what we do sure. and what we love. You know, Same. Yeah. There's, there's time and place for, for any running. But um, yep. I, I hope that um, we can roll up to any race in the country, uh, any ultra in the country, and just see people vibing, see people know who we are, right? Wear, wearing some T-shirts, coming up, giving some high fives, bullshit, and telling us about their stories and their experiences. I mean... It, it was never a, we want to make a million dollars off of this. It, it's for us, it's always been about the community. Yeah. Um, how can we impact the community? How can we grow the community? How can we um, really cultivate it and, and be a part of it? And it, it's not be a part of it. And in, in, like I said, selling millions of dollars worth of t-shirts. It's just, I want people to think of death March and think of uh, an experience that they had and want to come and tell us about it. That's, yeah. I mean, that's pretty, pretty fucking simple, but that yeah. I would be pumped with that in five years. Love that. Taylor. 
Yeah, piggyback off what Cody said, we're we're definitely aligned in there. We want to keep the uh, the soul of the company where we're at now. Um, like I said, um, kind of like a every man, every woman, every person towing the line has that experience who, from like a company voice, company culture standpoint. In five years, yeah. if we maintain what we're doing now over the like longevity, obviously there will be some maturation, some change things yeah. there but if it's at its essence from a cultural standpoint um how we're promoting things you know if if we can maintain what we're doing now for the next five years like that is mm-hmm. a success um as cody said um our our intention was you know as as participants to to kind of be where we're at now yeah like our our thought was we'd be where we are now like 12 months from now yeah. Um, so it's definitely, um, taken us a bit by surprise. Um, you know, we thought it would resonate, um, but we didn't realize how quickly it resonate. And so, mm-hmm. um, from like some of the company goals we talked about in person events, um, our, our kind of first foray into something like that, um, is our Strava club. So join it. Cody's yep. putting out great contents on that. Um, but nice. parlaying that into more in-person stuff. So whether that's, you know, we sponsor aid stations at a race and, you know, to steal from transition bikes, have a party in the woods, um, you know, being more community involved. Um, if, if we get big enough to where it can be our, our full job in five years and really focus on the community and, um, everything that Cody had described, yeah. um, that would be like pie in the sky. Amazing. Yeah. Um, Based on our experience so far, it might be something completely <laughs> beyond yeah. what we can imagine now. Because, yeah. like I said, yeah, yeah, we're that's, that's great. Way ahead of where we thought we'd be at this point. Um, yeah. Yeah, and we're thankful for our fans, customers, everyone for getting us yeah. here. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think um, by way of conclusion, you know, I, I think what you guys are bringing—the reason that you know that it resonates—the reason that anything that's like. I don't know the right word for it. Funny and you know, like really resonates is because it's also true. You know, like comedy is only like, you know, Seinfeld, you know, it's hilarious. But it's funny because it's true, you know, the old cliche. And I think what you, what you guys have done is you have insight into the culture, you know, and then you can you can sort yeah, of yeah. riff on it in a way. So you guys are clearly uh, death marchers, uh, yourself, like, you know what that's like to suffer forever. And then you bring this lightheartedness to the table. And I think that's interesting. And I'll just say this, and then I'll give each of you a final word. If you have anything that you want to say, uh, can you imagine what the aid stations would be like at the Donner party death march 40 miler? That's actually an 80 miler, like cannibalism, like takes on cannibalism. I don't know if this would be funny or too, or too much, but, uh, I'm just, gonna, like, I'm just have, trying to have a that leg really in the shoe. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, come on. Can you imagine the merch also that would come with that? I don't know what it's like to license the word Donner Party. I got to imagine there's something there. But I think this could be among the most epic, even if it's even if no one runs it. Just the merch will be amazing. I I have some. I have a really funny idea that we can talk offline about it. <laughs> well, well, do we need to talk to attorneys first before we say it out loud? Well, yeah, we just need to make sure that we're we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves <laughs> before we before we before we put our foot in the mouth. Um, yeah. But well, any last words from you guys? Like, uh, what's the website URL? How do people find you if they haven't already? Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're really just on online through Instagram, uh, Strava, and our website. Instagram, we're just uh, Death March Run Co. Um, okay. And then our website URL is deathmarchrunningcompany.com. Okay. Uh, but yeah, just feel free to look us up, shoot us a message. We, uh, I mean, I, I hope hope that people would tell you we love interacting with anybody that messages us. I mean, we yeah. we tell them our race plans. We, we tell them anything you want to talk about. We're we're here yeah. for it. We love it. So cool. Yeah. And then we'll probably be in person at some of the endurance race series events um, that are being hosted in Colorado. Um, okay. Just because local to us, um, so we'll probably be out there giving high fives ringing some cowbells right on maybe shotgun and beers we'll see <laughs> yeah we, we, to, to taylor's point we just signed on as sponsors for uh the endurance race series which is i think they have 
uh, like 13 total races split oh, between dang. San Diego and Colorado trail races. Cool. So anybody that's local to Colorado, there's some killer, killer trail races to do. Very, very accessible. It's, it's, yeah. um, multiple distances. Yeah. Jeff puts on great races. So nice. All right. How about well, cool, uh, guys. Last, we'll... last question for you. What's, what's next yeah. for you, Josh? Well, my family, we're, we're about to move to France. And so we're kind of in this massive, I, like, uh, wow. overhauling our life kind of, kind of stage. Um, you know, my, everything from borderlands where I think what, why I think you guys are interesting is we have this similar, like the, in the Venn diagram of death March and borderlands, it's this like, Hey, 99% of the sport is not being marketed to, in my opinion, in the way, um, we've done the Nike approach. Like most brands are doing the Nike approach, let's let's market, let's let's put our shoes on, on the best athlete, and that should trickle down and lead to sales. Meanwhile, ninety percent of the people plus don't know who finished the race they just ran, so they're not seeing that marketing. And so then, then the question is: is how are so many people wearing Hoka's when, in my opinion, they're not wearing them because Jim Walmsley has them on? So yeah. you know, I've I've dabbled in that, and that's been my audience, and you have that audience. We have that, and then the crossover, then like for monetizing, I've done a little bit of apparel. That's just not my, not my realm. Like a, ultimately in all the businesses I've ever started, have been like a community builder, like a coffee roasting company, bars, restaurants, like, you know, I'm tactile. I'm in person, you know, to be honest, like from a business standpoint, the money is in events. If you want to make the most money, the quickest in this industry, it's events. Uh, and we're going to do some of that. Um, we've got a 50 K, you know, in a month or so we'll do some of that. But ultimately, yeah, like, I'm real, yeah. real, real passionate about this app that we started called Wilder. It's it's in beta form right now, oh, and the goal yeah. is just to like bring people together. So where Strava owns generally, and I know you're using their tools mm -hmm. for what groups do, but Strava in general, they own what runners do when they're alone. You know, all of the metrics, all the stats, all the you know, yeah. the reason that I pay the 11.99 a month. What I want to do is I really want to own what runners do when they're together. And if this was born out of a, a love for like, how do we actually, I'm trying to think of the elevator version. Like I would just want runners to be safe. I care about safety and, but runners won't invest in safety. They think that they think you should be safe, but they will not invest in safety. And so how are we most safe? It's when we're together. And so I thought, uh, you know, building some technology around that. I've never done tech, never done an app, but ultimately my dream is that uh, I could that this app could be something that is genuinely useful to the running community and for run clubs and a way for people to interact with one another. And once I can prove that, I can layer in premium stuff. But for now, that's like the free for life uh, features that I'm working yeah. on. And so that's that's what I hope Man, takes I off. That. So you're yeah. you're telling us we need to get onto the Wilder app. You know, when it, when it's ready. Right now, it's good for like two to twelve people. And even yeah. then people, those two to 12 people need to be early adopters who know that there's problems and that I need them to give yeah. me feedback. Yeah. Ultimately yeah, it what it'd be great it. for is yes. What it'd be great for one of the premium features I want to do is like, you know, you have a certain way that you want to compete with your run club. Then you put 150 people in your run club in there. And then it's like, Hey, this weekend for the next seven days, we're going to see who can run the most miles in the next seven days. Or we're going to see who can do the most vert over the next seven days, or there's going to be a vert partner and a distance partner and who, which yeah. team can beat the other team. So I want to bring some like friendly competition, like motivation stuff to like gamify your training. But for now I've got to, I've got to make the core features as simple as possible. And, or like, you know, it's got to be like a handshake, just quick and easy. And right. And so the, I've, we've just got some problems that we're, we're, we're working through right now. Nice. No, that sounds great, man. I, I, I'm excited for you. Yeah. That's the one thing that I would Thanks. say that I think Strava really, really misses on in the club aspect is, is gamifying it, creating fun challenges yes. for your groups and, and clubs. Yeah. Um, man, that, that'll be a home run. Uh, good luck to you. And That's the thing awesome. is that they, thank you. Strava could do that. The question is, is why are they not doing that? And I think in the end, my get my best guess is just because uh, you know a, a million dollar investment to them goes further into their core products of what yeah. it, the individual runner accomplishes compared to yep. their group and that's just a guess yeah, right. but they also just introduced the dog thing so they're heavily invested in dog strava which i think is cool yeah. if you've got a dog yeah. Yeah. but 
Man, you, you guys are awesome. This was fun. I, I you have to tell Alan that I missed him, and I look forward to meeting him at some point. Um, yeah. But let's do this Absolutely. again, uh, yeah. and let's let's talk about how anything I can do to support you and stay in touch. Well, yeah, same. Likewise, Thank you. We really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. See you guys.